today academically. She is our link to such institutions as the Association of Christian Schools, Colleges, and Universities Accrediting Council, or ATSCO ACI. And she was also the former president of the Federation of Accrediting Agencies of the Philippines. A scholar of the United Board for Christian Higher Education in Asia, she went to Olivet College in Michigan, USA, and was also the exchange professor on curriculum designing and community-based approach in Newcastle upon Tyne, England, sponsored by the British Council. This lady who heads as I mentioned a while back, the highest academic office in the university has seen to it that Siliman will continue to be an institution of higher learning whose quality is beyond question. Precisely why we are enjoying the highest status that can be granted by the Commission on Higher Education or CHED. Friends, my pleasure just awarded as the most outstanding Negrense in the field of educational leadership. Let us give a warm welcome to Dr. Betsy Joy Bustamante Tan. To God be the glory. I didn't expect that when you give a welcome, you'll be properly introduced, but thank you, Dean Futalan, for that. Um, look around you, you will be meeting new friends. Have you tried doing that? As I observe, you've been so focused on what you are reading there, but uh, try to look around you and feel. Um, the, this may not be a very big uh, auditorium, but this is meant to happen because of our purpose for being here. I says what I have said, to God be the glory. And we just sung that song, which I know we silently also prayed, recognizing the Lord as our light. And being our light, we are all here and we thank him as we continue to believe in his wisdom, as we continue trusting in his counsel and resting in his love. So congratulations for making this as a priority of the day. I say so not as a matter of polite form, but I would say then that yes, this is the start or probably a continuing way of connecting with each other because that's really what we are here for. We are just guided with the Lord and see to it that things will happen which reminds me of the social activist when he says, reflection without action is mere verbalism. And action without reflection is mere activism. So let's see to it that whatever we gained, whatever we learned from each other, let's also reflect on those and see to it that we are ready to act on those so that if you feel your heart beating right now, there's really a purpose why we are here. To make it happen, why not soon as possible time and not wait for 2050? I don't know if I will still be around to enjoy that. So again, welcome to this um, well-chosen, uh, I would say, I should not say modesty aside, you've chosen Siliman because as what I have heard in the human, uh, the homily yesterday, it says that when you say modesty, that means you are not so sure whether you have to acknowledge where you are. So let's not say modesty aside, but thank you for choosing Siliman as the venue. Brothers and sisters in Christ, from hindsight, into foresight, a psychological, innovative focus. Esteemed officers and members of PSCM, PIDS or PIDS, and our college host, College of Business Administration, led by its dean, who is also a lawyer by profession, 
Dr. Gloria Futalan. Good morning. About two years ago, in Tagaytay City, colleagues in and colleagues and partners in education gathered together at the 30th AXCO AAI Assembly to share their thoughts on educational reform for ASEAN integration. Today, welcome to a continuing fellowship and discussion that now looks forward beyond ASEAN at 50. In her column, Sketches, last Friday, November 17, 2017, that dealt about the ASEAN identity, Philippine star editor in chief, Anne or Anna Marie Pamintuan, lamented that several Southeast Asian journalists who have visited the Philippines regularly have a common observation that there is low awareness among ordinary Filipinos of belonging to the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Today, Silman University is very happy to welcome you to our campus to put things right for our Filipino or for our fellow Filipinos. In his An Essay on Criticism, written in 1711 yet, in this point, Alexander Pope gave us this terse reminder. A little learning is a dangerous thing. Just like in research, where the theoretical framework has to be established first for a solid and substantial exploration of a given topic. Welcome to this joint academic-based discussion of ideas on the ASEAN integration by the Philippine APIC Study Center Network and the Philippine Institute for Development Studies. The place you have chosen for this symposium workshop may not be huge here in our MBA presentation room, but I think for an intimate group of intellectuals like you, this is the place not only to sit and remember, but also where your huge supply of ideas on the opportunities and challenges for regional integration come bountiful and strong. Exactly from hindsight into foresight, hopefully there is a psychological innovative focus. Welcome to the College of Business Administration and welcome to Siliman University by the sea. Hopefully you'll find time to enjoy the city, the city of gentle people. Welcome and good morning. To give his opening remarks, you have again the speaker's profile, but this guy is just worth every word I would want to say to introduce him formally. The president of the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and the person who makes possible this symposium today, he was formerly the director, or he's formerly the deputy director general of the National Economic and Development Authority, and he has a PhD in economics from the School of Economics, University of the Philippines. He is also a renowned researcher, having written and published papers on financial markets, public economics, local governance, institutional economics, and infrastructure regulation. Friends, the lead convener of the Philippine APEC Study Center Network, let us welcome with a warm round of applause, Dr. Gilberto M. Lianto. 
Thank you, Gloria. It's fashionable these days to bring either a laptop or a tablet with your first speech. But truthfully, we didn't print this speech. I wrote this. It's not a speech, opening remarks. I just wrote this last night. But first, I'd like to thank Siliman University, the officials, and of course, faculty and student, student body for co hosting with PIDS this very important regional symposium. And uh, <clears throat> before I go on to my opening remarks, I would say I was struck by the, is this what you call a motto here? Mm. In your university seal, Via Veritas Vita. And that really, the welcome remarks of Dr. Tan really <coughs> resonate with us because of this via, the way, veritas, the truth, and the life. Meaning to say, the road to life is the truth. And in this era of fake news, and uh, very active, sometimes it's not dysfunctional on social media, we have to remind ourselves that we need to really grind ourselves down to the truth so that we'll find a way, you know, amidst this seemingly very confusing world that we live in. Anyway, um, I was impressed, struck by this motto, so I could not resist giving a comment on this. Let me go on with my opening remarks. First of all, as I said I would like to thank the university for co-hosting with us. This is, uh, I think, the best choice that we have made in recent years. Because we have, at PID has decided to bring to the region discussions and symposiums and conferences on very important topics affecting the country and, of course, the region. And this morning we have chosen as a topic of symposium the ASEAN, be an ASEAN at 50 challenges and opportunities for regional integration. As you know, we have just concluded a celebration of, uh, of the ASEAN summit in Manila. And also a party in Clark, and to much to our relief, uh, uh, traffic flow is uh, back to normal, still congested now. <laughs> anyway, we gathered in this in this uh, summit the leaders, the political leaders, as well as the academics, and of course civil society, and stakeholders to what we call a rapidly emerging ASEAN economic community. It's an occasion to celebrate, and uh, we want to ask ourselves why. Why is it important? And I think part of the reasons, the explanation will be given us in today's symposium. Certainly, the topic of today's symposium is very timely and important indeed, especially for our country, which remains as a leading economy in the ASEAN due to its sturdy economic performance. As we know, the Philippine Statistics Authority has released the most recent GDP growth figure, and I apologize, I'm an economist, so I always lapse into citing this GDP growth as a metric of the country's performance, and it's at 6.9% in the third quarter of 2017, with industry leading the growth with around 7.5% growth rate, followed by services at 7.1%. Now, that is very important. This growth in industry is very important, 7.5. Because for a long, long time, uh, nothing has come out really from the manufacturing sector because of uh, many problems. Uh, uh, factories and uh, various firms have moved out of China and other countries. But as it seems in the Philippines, we are experiencing a resurgence of manufacturing and industry. And that's very good because this is a sector that creates a lot of employment. And therefore, right now, we have before us <coughs> two legs that will carry us to growth. I am reminded of Nori Osui of the ADB, Asian Development Bank, who criticized Philippine growth by saying it can't grow, it can't move without only one leg. And that one leg is the services sector. And you know also that we have quite grown very fast in the services sector on the back of IT and BPM. And here we are, PSA telling us, you know, industry has even overtaken services as a source of growth. 
with 7.5 percent, no less. So, with these two legs, I think we are set for, <coughs> excuse me, for even more rapid growth and sustained growth at that. And if we now turn our, our collective minds to develop agriculture, then I would certainly say the Philippines would be a major economic power in the ASEAN. Now, the Philippines has drawn from the dynamism and growth in the ASEAN as intra-ASEAN trade has become an engine that drives growth in the region. The World Economic Forum reports that the ASEAN as a whole has a good record in recent years, growing by around 5% a year, powering the creation of a giant middle class. Now, that is also a very important phenomenon, the creation of a giant middle class in the region. That's very important because it lends peace and stability to the region. It builds a huge consumer base of more than 600 million, million consumers. At the start of 2016, the 10 economies of ASEAN were collectively the seventh largest economy in the world. By the start of 2017, that rank had improved to sixth. And by 2020, it will be the fifth largest economy in the world. And in the middle of that large economy will be the Philippines, growing with a very large population and a strong services and manufacturing sector. Given the importance of the ASEAN and Philippine economic performance, and likewise the Philippine, Philippines' contribution to the emerging ASEAN economic community, it is fitting to hold this symposium here in Siliman in order to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the ASEAN. The region finally established the AEC of the ASEAN Economic Community on December 2016. The member states should to continuously push for the realization of their ambitious vision of an integrated production base with a large consumer market of around 600 million, as I mentioned a while ago. The realization of this goal will result in greater output for individual member states, more opportunities for business and investment, as well as a wider choice of goods and services for consumers at competitive prices. Of course, there are significant challenges and opportunities as well, and it is in conferences such as this, that, such as what we are having today, that we begin to appreciate those challenges and think of pathways to solve them. I was looking through the abstract, and. Uh, I like very much the uh, paper by uh, Dr. Francis because he was telegraphing to us what needs to be done in the ASEAN. First, the part of the abstract, he was saying, you know, there's need for capital formation, for looking at the size of government. And that's precisely what we will, will, will discover today, what I call as pathways to truth via Veritas Vita. <laughs> Foremost among these reforms are, of course, stronger human capital formation, regulatory reform, capital markets for reforms, among others. In this spirit, I'm forgetting that I'm not the main speaker. So <laughs> I'm supposed to just deliver the opening remarks. <laughs> but you know, senior people like me uh, get away with this kind of things. So. I'm a senior citizen, so bear with me. <laughs> it's hard for presidents not to speak a lot of time, so <laughs> that's it. In this spirit, let me thank the speakers in today's forum who will share with us their learnings and insights on the various challenges faced by the ASEAN and the countries as well. We have brought here uh, young researchers. Um, we really admire the the uh, dedication of the young people. You're from De La Salle, not Ateneo. De La Salle. <laughs> I'm from UP. Nita Makaba, UP. We brought no less uh, you know, these rising, rising uh, researchers, economic stars in the future. Please inspire the young people here. We could have brought here old people like myself, you know. 67 years old and starting to die. <laughs> Young people like Francis and we use it from them.
So, what am I going to say? In closing, let me thank Dr. Gloria Fotalan, Sidiman University's representative to the steering committee of the PIBS Apex Study Center Network, of course, Dr. Linda Medalia, Dr. Shar, and, and her group for uh, mounting this important seminar in this beautiful city of Tumaguete. But I thank you most of all, the participants in today's symposium, that I see from the speakers and have that set a very active participation in this symposium. Thank you and good day. Our keynote speaker is a young gentleman, and uh, I always use this line when I introduce young people. Many of you are familiar with this. We say, the spring can rise above its source, and we have no less than our keynote speaker who will prove to us the same line. He is the Foreign Service Officer of the Department of Foreign Affairs. He worked as a business journalist at Discovery Reports Group, where he also wrote business articles and corporate profiles on global companies for publication on the South China Morning Post, China's leading newspaper and the most highly awarded news organization in Asia. An information officer at the Philippine Information Agency, that main development communication arm of the country, he taught English and literature in different institutions like De La Salle, the Philippine Science High School, and Adamson University. He is an alumnus of the University of Santo Tomas and is currently working on his master's degree at the Ateneo de Manila University. May I take this opportunity to introduce him as one who passed the Foreign Service Officer exam in 2015 together with our very own Stacy Danica Alcantara Siliman Suma Cum Laude during her time. Friends, to challenge and inspire us, let's welcome with a big round of applause, Mr. Alfred A. Christopher Guillaume. Thank you, Dean Putalan, for that introduction. Yes, uh, uh, Stacy, an alumna of uh, Silicon University, was my batchmate. She took the Foreign Service Officer exam. So something to be proud of for Silicon University. Dr. Betsy Joy Tan, Vice President for Academic Affairs at the Silicon University. Dr. Gilberto M. Lianto, President of the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and the lead convenor of Philippine Apex Study Center Network. Dr. Linda Medalia, Project Director, PASCN. Dean Gloria Fudalan of the College of Business Administration. Honorable and distinguished panel of speakers in today's symposium. Esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant morning to all of you. Just a few days ago, the Philippines hosted the 31st ASEAN Summit and Related Summits. The spotlight was on the Philippines as host of the event and as chair of ASEAN this year. Our chairmanship theme was guided by six thematic priorities, namely a people-oriented and people-centered ASEAN, peace and stability in the region, maritime security and cooperation, inclusive innovation-led growth, ASEAN resiliency, and ASEAN as a model of regionalism, a, glo a global player. These six priorities are under the overarching theme, partnering for change, engaging the world. I must say we have all the reasons to be proud of the outcomes of the ASEAN chairmanship in general and how the 31st ASEAN summit was held. Aside from the seamless flow of events, the peaceful and orderly situation in the country, the generally good weather, and of course the awe-inspiring opening and closing ceremonies if you were able to witness the, the program, the 31st ASEAN Summit and related summits was meaningful, productive, and purposeful. For one, the leaders were able to sign the ASEAN Consensus on the Protection and Promotion of the Rights of Migrant Workers, which transcends the social protection, including the humane and fair treatment 
and access to justice and health services of the region's migrant workers. The document also provides for visitation rights by family members, rights to have access to information pertaining to their employment and employment-related conditions, and right to fair and appropriate remuneration and benefits, among others. The signing of this landmark document will benefit more than 200,000 Filipino migrant workers in the region and the millions of intra-ASEAN migrant workers. Ladies and gentlemen, it was during the Philippines chairmanship of ASEAN 10 years ago, that was 2007, when the leaders signed the Cebu Declaration on the Protection and Promotion of the Rights of Migrant Workers. And it was also during the chairmanship year that this follow-up instrument finally has, by, has been finalized. This is a testament of ASEAN's strong resolve to uphold a people-centered, people-oriented ASEAN community. The 31st ASEAN Summit also saw the adoption of important outcome documents that would strengthen our commitment and collective efforts to ensure peace and progress in the region. First, through the prevention and combating of cybercrime, terrorism, and other forms of uh, disorder in the region. Also, through innovation. Outcome documents that would improve the welfare of the peoples through ending all forms of malnutrition, the combating of antimicrobial resistance, youth development, women empowerment, climate change, and disaster health management, among others, were also adopted by the leaders. In the area of environment and climate change, the ASEAN Joint Statement on Climate Change to the 23rd Session of the Conference of Parties to the United Nations Framework on Climate Change as well as the ASEAN Joint Declaration on Hazardous Chemicals and Waste Management were also adopted. The ASEAN Summit also served as venue to discuss important issues, such as how to resolve threats to peace and security in the region, such as terrorism, radicalization, violent extremism, piracy, armed robbery, and illicit drugs, among others. As an outward-looking and proactive region, ASEAN also met with dialogue partners at the Plus One Summits, as well as other external partners in ASEAN-led mechanisms, such as the East Asia Summit and the ASEAN Plus Three, all for renewed and stronger cooperation in various areas of development in the political, security, economic, and sociocultural sphere. These are the three community pillars of ASEAN. Ladies and gentlemen, this year marks a milestone in the history of ASEAN, which started as an organization composed of only five member nations, and whose future was uncertain, given the individual members' political situation and the unstable geopolitical context of the world 50 years ago. Now we can see ASEAN has proven to be a successful regional organization with its consolidated, integrated, inclusive 10 member states, functional cooperation, and dynamic partnership. ASEAN's three C's, namely consultation, consensus, and cooperation, have proven to be the main ingredient to our success. Despite our vast <coughs> diversity, we have always come to terms and agreed on issues or topics that concern our region. With ASEAN, there is always a balance between the collective good of all the 10 member states and that of the individual nations. Colleagues, ASEAN has indeed reached maturity and gained wisdom in its 50 years of prolific existence. And despite challenges that come along the way, ASEAN has proven to be resilient and continuous learning from past experiences. As an illustration of our resilience and solidarity in the face of adversity, we have been steadfast in providing assistance to our neighbors in need through the ASEAN Coordinating Center for Humanitarian Assistance on Disaster Management, also known as the AHA Center, housed in Jakarta, Indonesia, which leads in disaster management and relief operations 
for Asian member states that are affected by disasters. The spirit of Bayanihan comes to play in times of need, and this is in keeping with the one ASEAN, one response commitment of our countries in responding to disasters and allaying the sufferings of our brothers and sisters in the region struck by natural and man-made disasters. Biodiversity protection and conservation is another achievement of ASEAN as the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, which is housed in the Philippines, specifically in Los Paños in Laguna, has been actively promoting the improvement of biodiversity in the region. Through its support to the ASEAN Heritage Parks program, which currently includes 40 ASEAN Heritage Parks. It is truly important as our region contains 18% of the plants and animals and is home to three of the 17 known megadiverse countries in the world, namely Indonesia, Malaysia, and of course, you know, the third one, our very own, the Philippines. ASEAN alone has one-third of all known coral reefs in the world, and 60% of tropical pea plants are in Southeast Asia, comprising 23 million hectares. We are home to endemic and rare endangered species and unique ecosystems, with more than 80 billion tons of carbons in forests, contributing significantly to the livelihoods of a substantial number of people in the region. Our region works to have a balance between environmental sustainability and prosperity and innovation. Since the establishment of the ASEAN Economic Community, huge opportunities have been coming into the region through the freer flow of goods and services, investments, and human resources that contribute to the development of ASEAN economic, economies. The Master Plan on ASEAN Connectivity 2025, or the MPAC 2025, has given momentum for connectivity, particularly in the sub-regional cooperation as the Bint Iaga, or the Brunei Darussalam, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, East ASEAN Growth Area which will enhance trade, investments, and infrastructure in the part of the region. Through the Bint Piaga, there will be an increase in mobility and stronger economic activity in Mindanao and Palawan. People-to-people -people exchange is another arena where ASEAN has been successful. Scholarship programs and student exchange programs have increased within ASEAN over the years and this cultural integration and exchange of information and best practices in various areas of specialization will provide a venue for improved knowledge and skills among Southeast Asians that will be beneficial to our region's economy. The mutual recognition arrangements now covering almost, well, around eight professions give people equal access to job opportunities within ASEAN. Ladies and gentlemen, indeed ASEAN has come a long way since its formation 50 years ago. Over the years of sustained community building efforts and activities, ASEAN has proven to be a model of regionalism and a global player. Other organizations, regional organizations look up to ASEAN and we are also considered, well, some claim that we are the second most successful intra, well, regional organization next to the European Union, but of course the European Union would be a different uh, organization, a supranational organization. We may not be a perfect organization and there are still areas of cooperation that need to, to be improved on, but our region is working its way toward the achievement of its vision to be a politically stable, economically integrated, and socially responsible ASEAN community, all embodied in the ASEAN Community Vision of 2025. We all have a stake in the success of our goal of ASEAN integration, but we have key roles to play as well. I thank the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, the Philippine APEC Study Center Network, the Siliman University and its College of Business Administration for organizing this regional symposium that would enhance public awareness on the ASEAN and present opportunities and challenges for ASEAN integration. 
Public information and awareness is another area which places an opportunity for Filipinos and ASEAN peoples to fully understand and appreciate ASEAN and eventually contribute to the attainment of our regional goals with the help of technology. The challenge lies on how we could use all the machineries that we have at our disposal to propel our stakeholders, especially the younger generation, to actively and positively engage and contribute to national and regional community building. With activities such as this regional symposium, we can take steps towards a more synergized, convergent, and dynamic ASEAN community. Our small steps will bring macro benefits to our regional development goals. Indeed, the future is bright for ASEAN, and the next year signals our countdown to ASEAN's journey to another purposeful 50 years. Ladies and gentlemen, mabuhay ang ASEAN. Magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Thank you. Uh, another round of applause for Mr. Diante. May I request Dr. Tan and Dr. Lianto to please come on stage to award the Certificate of Appreciation to our keynote speaker. Let me read the citation. Siliman University, Philippine Apex Study Center Network, Philippine Institute for Development Studies, award this Certificate of Appreciation to Mr. Alfred Christopher A. Guillen, in recognition of his valuable contribution as keynote speaker during the regional symposium on Beyond ASEAN at 50 Opportunities and Challenges for Regional Integration, held on November 20, 2017, in line with PASCN's Information Dissemination Program and as the network's contribution to the Philippines Chairmanship of the ASEAN 2017. Given this 20th day of November 2017 at the MBA presentation room, Siliman University, Dumaguete City, Philippines, signed Gilberto M. Lianto, President PIDS and Lead Convenor of PASCN, and Dr. Joy, Betsy Joy B. Tan, Vice President for Academic Affairs of Siliman. We are also giving some tokens to the BPAA and Dr. Medalia from PASCN and PIDS will do the honor. <coughs> by 9.30, so can you join us for a while? Can we have our, for the speakers, 